On this edition of Manned Space, we sail the ocean of storms with Apollo 12 and meet some of the crew up close. Saturn Launch Control. The crew is now sitting down to breakfast. Their menu is the normal astronaut fare of orange juice, steak, eggs, coffee, and toast. All our propellants are stable with the launch vehicle. We are go as far as our launch time of 11.22 a.m. Eastern Standard Time is concerned. Weather conditions will be acceptable for launch under the latest forecast. T minus three hours, 30 minutes, and holding in a built-in hold. This is Kennedy Launch Control. On the morning of November 14th, 1969, the crew of Apollo 12, Pete Conrad, Richard Gordon, and Alan Bean, prepared themselves for a trip to the ocean of storms on the lunar equator. The only all-Navy crew of the Apollo program, Apollo 12 was commanded by Pete Conrad. For Conrad, this would be his third trip to space. Joining Conrad as command module pilot was Richard Gordon. Gordon's only other space flight was in 1966 when he flew aboard Gemini 11 with Conrad. The third member of the crew was lunar module pilot Alan Bean. A naval aviator from Texas, this was Bean's first space flight. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. Prime crew for the Apollo 12 mission, astronauts Pete Conrad, Dick Gordon, and Alan Bean have completed breakfast and have now gone down the hall to the suit room where they will don their spacesuits and perform final checkouts in preparation for their departure for the launch pad, which is due some 40 minutes or so from this time. We are still go on our countdown at this time. Weather forecast still uh, very acceptable for launch despite a ceiling, a broken ceiling at about 10,000 feet. With backup command module pilot Al Warden in the Apollo 12 spacecraft checking out the various switch positions in preparation for their arrival, the crew of Apollo 12 headed for the launch pad. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, three hours, 12 minutes and counting. The Apollo 12 crew now departing the crew quarters, boarding their transfer van ready for the nine mile trip to the launch pad. We give about 18 minutes for the crew to do go from their crew quarters to the launch pad where they'll board their Apollo 12 spacecraft at the 320 foot level. Although it appears not to be raining uh, at the crew quarters area, we appear to have a pretty good rainstorm going on in the vicinity of the launch pad at this time. However, it is not interfering with any of our operations in the count. The weather forecast is still go for launch. This is Kennedy Launch Control. Once the astronauts completed the 320-foot elevator ride to the entry level of the command module, they began boarding the spacecraft. The first astronaut aboard will be the commander, astronaut Pete Conrad, who sits in the left-hand seat. He will be followed by the lunar module pilot, Alan Bean, who sits in the right-hand seat. Dick Gordon will be called across the swing arm and will be the third member of the crew to come aboard. As the countdown proceeded to launch time, the crew continued to evaluate systems aboard the spacecraft while ground controllers kept an eye on the weather. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T minus one hour, 28 minutes, 55 seconds and counting. The spacecraft hatch has been closed. The cabin is now at its proper atmosphere. The astronauts have completed several vital tests already. Uh, Pete Conrad now gearing up for a special check that will occur shor shortly. This is a calibration of what we call a cue ball. It's an angle of attack meter located atop uh, the emergency escape tower, which is located, of course, on top of the command module. Our weather uh, conditions still stand. Our forecast is still go for launch. 
We expect winds from the southwest getting up to uh, gusts in the area of some 25 knots. A ceiling of about 10,000 feet broken is forecast. However, we are keeping a close eye on this weather front that is in the area. We are go for launch at this time, however. This is Kennedy Launch Control. At T-minus five minutes in the countdown, best wishes were sent to the crew by members of the launch support team. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T-minus five minutes and counting. Spacecraft test conductor Skip Chauvin has said, have a good trip, Pete. Pete reported back, uh, we appreciate everything everyone has done. Four minutes and counting, still proceeding at this time. The launch operations manager, Paul Donnelly, said to Pete Conrad, the launch team wishes you good luck. May the wind be always behind you. Pete Conrad said, thank you very much. Count still continuing. This is Kennedy Launch Control. With the launch only seconds away, the weather at the Kennedy Space Center was completely cloud covered and rain was falling. The countdown then entered the final 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engines running, commit, liftoff. We have liftoff, 11.22 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Despite the weather conditions, Apollo 12 lifted off exactly on schedule. All was well for the first 36 seconds of the flight. Then, as Conrad later described it, he heard a sound like a baseball bat hitting a pole, and we were the pole. The vehicle had been struck by lightning. According to Conrad, it then happened again. Every alarm buzzer and light we have is going off, he reported later. Data just stops coming in. As Conrad tells it, none of the astronauts knew what the hell to do. Okay, we just lost the platform, gang. I don't know what happened here. We had everything in the world drop out. Roger. I got three fuel cell lights and AC bus light. Fuel cell disconnect, AC bus overload, one and two, main bus A and B out. Without knowing if the Saturn V was now completely dead, Conrad contemplated aborting the flight. Then, help came from Mission Control in Houston. Apollo 12, Houston, try FCE to auxiliary, over. It took the crew a moment to digest the instruction from Houston. But then Bean declared, I know what it is, and at once switched the signal conditioning equipment switch to auxiliary. Immediately, Mission Control was again acquiring data from the spacecraft. The fuel cells were back online, providing power to the vehicle, and the crew of Apollo 12 was go. Then, 11 minutes, 37 seconds after liftoff, Apollo 12 was orbiting Earth at a velocity of 25,561 feet per second. At nearly 2 hours, 30 minutes, ground elapsed time, the crew of Apollo 12 got the word they'd been waiting for. Well, Houston, a good word is your go for TLI. Hope you do, we're ready. We didn't expect anything else. TLI, or Translunar Injection, was the maneuver the crew would perform to thrust themselves toward the moon. Following the TLI maneuver, Apollo 12 was at an altitude of 1,023 nautical miles, traveling nearly 32,000 feet per second. Before the astronauts could settle in for the trip to the moon, Command Module Pilot Richard Gordon would first have to dock with the lunar module the crew named Intrepid. Apollo 12 moving into dock with the lunar module. I think we just saw you grab it. We got a hard dock, Houston. She looks good. All latches made. Roger, P. Looks good. Barring any unforeseen problem, the crew would enter lunar orbit in about three days. Apollo 12, Houston, your go for LOI. Roger, Houston, go for LOI. Burn checklist is complete to minus six minutes, and we're holding a dead point. Right. On the other side. Okay, Pete, we'll see you at uh, 4357. LOI, or Lunar Orbit Insertion, was the maneuver that would put Apollo 12 into orbit around the moon. Pete Conrad's post-burn report indicates the maneuver was almost precisely as planned. The burn was nearly perfect. Apollo 12 had successfully entered lunar orbit. At 108 hours 24 minutes, ground elapsed time, the lunar module separated from the command module to begin the descent to the lunar surface. 
A secondary objective of the Apollo 12 mission was to examine the Surveyor 3 spacecraft and collect lunar samples in its vicinity. Surveyor had been on the moon since April 20th, 1967. It was the second unmanned vehicle to make a soft landing on the lunar surface. In order to achieve that objective, Intrepid would have to make a pinpoint landing from nearly 250,000 miles away. Conrad was pretty confident he could make that happen. 300 feet coming down at 5. Hey, you're really maneuvering around. Yeah. Come on down. Hey. Okay. Come on down. 180 feet. Get some dust before long. 50 feet coming down. Watch for the dust. Coming down at 2 feet. You got plenty of gas. Plenty of gas, dude. He's got it made. Come on in there. Contact light. Roger. Copy contact. Close. Good landing. Hey, outstanding, man. Hello, oh, man, Houston. I'll tell you, I, I think we're in a place that's a lot dustier than Neil. The good thing we had a simulator because that was an IFR landing. On November 19, 1969, at 1.54 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Pete Conrad became the second man to pilot a spacecraft to a soft landing on the moon. Intrepid had landed in the Ocean of Storms, a mere 535 feet northwest from Surveyor 3. Then, four hours after touching down on the moon, Pete Conrad began making his way down the ladder toward the lunar surface. Hey, I'll tell you where we're parked next to. Yeah. We're about 25 feet in front of the surveyor crater. <laughs> That's good. That's where we want it to be. I, got, I, I bet you when I get down to the bottom of the ladder, I can see the surveyor. Okay. About 40 minutes after Conrad stepped on the moon, he was joined by Bean. The first of two planned forays onto the lunar surface, the two men spent three hours on the moon during which they collected lunar samples, deployed the S-band communications antenna, and set up the solar wind experiment. The crew also deployed the Apollo Lunar Surface Experiments package before concluding the first walk on the moon. 131 hours and 28 minutes into the mission, the crew began the second EVA. They collected 70 pounds of lunar samples before turning their attention to the surveyor landing craft and retrieving several parts to return to Earth for further study. After nearly four hours on the lunar surface, Conrad and Bean returned to Intrepid and readied the vehicle for its launch and rendezvous with the Yankee Clipper. 32 hours since landing on the moon, the ascent stage of Intrepid was ignited and the two astronauts were thrust skyward. Three and a half hours later, the rendezvous and docking were complete and the crew of Apollo 12 could focus on the return to Earth. Following transfer from Intrepid into Yankee Clipper, the ascent stage was jettisoned for an impact with the moon. During the 45th revolution around the moon, the command service module's big engine fired and the crew of Apollo 12 was earthbound. On their journey home from the moon, the crew of Apollo 12 captured this image of a solar eclipse. On November 24, 1969, Apollo 12 ended its 10-day mission. Alpine uh, reports uh, three main chutes have deployed. Uh, we record splash at uh, ground elapsed time of 244 hours, 36 minutes, 24 seconds. Apollo 12 had splashed down in the Pacific Ocean about three miles south of the main recovery vessel USS Hornet. America's second manned mission to the moon had thus concluded. In May of 1973, Pete Conrad would return to space once more as commander of the first crewed flight of Skylab. It would be his final space flight. On July 8, 1999, Charles Pete Conrad Jr. died from injuries sustained in a motorcycle accident. Alan Bean went on to command the second man Skylab mission in July of 1973. Following his resignation from NASA in 1981, Bean enjoyed a career as the only painter to have ever walked on another heavenly body. Alan Bean passed away on May 26, 2018. He was 86 years old. Richard Gordon was scheduled to command Apollo 18 before budget cuts eliminated the flight.
he would never fly in space again. He died on November 6, 2017. While I never met Pete Conrad, I had the pleasure of meeting both Alan Bean and Dick Gordon several times over the years. As a collector of space memorabilia, I'm proud to have acquired this USS Hornet splashdown menu from the recovery of Apollo 12. Eventually, I was able to secure both Gordon's and Bean's autographs on the menu. Here's an autographed 8x10 photograph of Pete Conrad. It is inscribed 2J with best wishes, Charles Conrad Jr. J is J. Rathman, the son of former Indianapolis 500 race car driver Jim Rathman. Rathman eventually became a Chevrolet car dealer and was instrumental in keeping the astronauts in Corvette automobiles. Do you have memories of the flight of Apollo 12? If so, please share them in the comment section. Thanks again for watching Manned Space. Please watch for upcoming videos at least twice a week, during which I'll discuss the history of the space program by highlighting artifacts and memorabilia from my extensive space collection. Also, please like, subscribe, and click the notification button for more great content about manned space.